and we'll save this in source images. So we'll jump back into Marmoset, fire up our source images and load our video colour in. Okay, so we have the, the base colour here. Um, the next thing we want to do is just load our metalness map in. So if we come to specular map and select metalness, and then in here we'll load here our albedo. And you see the channel here, we can set this to A for albedo. So there we go, we're getting a kind of reasonable look and shine already. Now you can see the reflections are already blurred, and that's because by default, Marmoset is set to 0.7 in gloss. So if we just ramp that up to 1, you'll see you'll start to get your mirror like reflections. So let's just check out our chart here. So we can see 0.7 here, and that is what um, Marmoset is set to by default. When we put it to 1, it's like this. So really, we want to look along this chart for our initial kind of roughness map, so maybe we'll go for something like 0.7. So I'll make Control N for new, and I'll fill that in. I'm not actually sure now which one of those is the uh, the right one, so what I'm going to do is just put white in my one back there. Uh, maybe we'll go in the middle around there actually. And then we'll fill that in with that grey. So let's just save this out now as TA gold bar R for roughness. And we'll load this into our, to our map. Okay, that's not looking too bad. Um, so we've got basic maps now in each of our slots, but what we really want to do now is work into our roughness map and some more detail into our normal map. Um, so I think the first thing we'll do is just jump onto our roughness map and get some of that done. So we've got a base value here. Now we're going to approach this in two ways. We're going to use a couple of images to generate some roughness detail and some normal map detail. And then we're going to use some hand painting stuff as well. So one thing we'll want to do quickly is jump back into Maya, select our low poly model, and just bake out these UVs. So if we come to our texture editor, which you can, bear in mind you can also get to this, through this window here. And some people prefer working like that, it's a bit cleaner than having the separate window. And if we just do polygons, UV snapshot, and let's give this a name. 1024 is fine, JPEG is fine, and just hit OK. So if we jump back into Photoshop and browse to our images folder, and we'll just open up our bar UVs. Now these are going to be useful for later because what we're going to do is actually just paint in some uh, wear and stuff around the edges for our roughness map. Um, another little thing to bear in mind is I do have quite a lot of reference that I'm working from here. So like different kind of gold, gold images, gold bars, just to see the kind of detail that you get from uh, um, from the kind of roughness value for gold. So, you know, there's even ones like this, you get quite a lot of variety. But, um, yeah, so make sure you, you're always working from image reference. Like, the whole point of this exercise is to produce some realistic materials. So make sure you're working off some realistic reference. Okay, and that's why I've kind of picked these images as well because are kind of similar to the um, to the value uh, to the roughness I'm seeing on some of these gold bars right so on our first image here then um, bear in mind this was a bigger image when I first started but I have reduced it down so first of all let's go down to 1024 by 1024 
and just bring this up a little bit. Um, so the first thing we know is roughness works in black and white, so let's just convert this image to black and white. Uh, the next thing we can see is this is we've we spoke before about our value being about 0.7 on this. So if we just color pick around there again, come back to our concrete image and drop a new layer in and just fill that in with that color. You can see roughly where that's at. Like certainly we don't want these kind of really kind of dark areas specifically on this. I don't think. So let's use the levels on this, and that can help to just equalize this image a bit. And then we'll use a brightness contrast and just bring the brightness and the contrast down a touch. And then I might actually just use this gray that we created here um, just to help equalize that even further. Um, let's select our UV image, use Control A to select the whole thing, Control C to copy, and just paste that in over the top. And then I like to actually invert it and then use multiply. Then you can see what that roughness detail is going to do, like how big are each of these little indents going to be? Are they too big? Like if this was you know this kind of size and I'd say those those indents are definitely too big so it's worth bearing that in mind just making sure that you're happy with the kind of size of the indents also it might be that you find whatever you're using if you try flipping it you might prefer where some of these details are actually going okay so let's just cl close this down and we'll try saving this over our uh, reflection one, our uh, roughness map here. Okay, that's not looking too bad. We're already getting some kind of reasonable details on that. So I'm reasonably happy with that, to be fair. Let's. Um, <coughs> select our other image here, copy that in, and we'll try just overlaying that over the top. Oh, and again, make sure that you set this to black and white. And what I might do is just do it. No, I'll leave that as it is. And let's just see how that's sitting over the top of that. Okay, so we'll do a similar thing to what we did before. We'll use levels to brighten it up. And then we'll use brightness contrast just to bring it back down a little bit. So it's probably still a little bit dark, so let's just levels it up a bit, like so. Okay, so we've got another reference map in there. Let's just test that one out real quick. Or the at least the basis for a roughness roughness map, and you can see there I've left the um, the UVs on. So press Control S just to save actually each time. So we got another roughness map there, which is reasonable as well. Actually, it's kind of more less worn kind of gold. But I think I probably prefer a more more worn one. Um, but what you can do obviously is mix these together as well. So if I just put our new one down to say 58%, and we should find we get, you know, the details are now less pronounced, but there's more of them. But I think I'm going to stick with, with our one with quite a lot of detail. Let's make this quite worn gold. Okay, so with our roughness map, um, now started, we can see if we're going to keep this as a base kind of section, what we'll probably want to do is actually 
convert that this bit into a normal map where they, all these kind of little dinks are. So to do that we're going to use Endo2, so if we just fire up the Quixel Suite. And Mum has this odd thing where it keeps jumping in front of Photoshop, so I'm just going to move it onto my, onto my other screen. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is actually just duplicate this image. So go to Image Duplicate, and then we'll flatten this down. In fact, I might just turn off that grey layer, and then we'll flatten this down. And then we'll use, click the N for Endo 2. And what we can either do here is convert it ourselves, just using this, or we can use one of the presets. I think we'll, we'll actually do it ourselves, just because we can. Um, so at the moment, we want that to go down, really. And we'll put the size right down, and probably let's mess around with some of these settings until we get something we like. You can see we're starting to bring out some of these. Some of those details. And obviously, one thing to do if we just go back to this again. And we'll flatten this down again. <coughs> so one thing to bear in mind, we can use some of the presets here. So if you we just browse through the presets, to, sorry, to get to those, we just go to here and then go to Photo Normal Presets. And then you can actually browse through some of these and find one that, that might look like the kind of thing that you might want to use. So obviously we're looking for something that um, will create the, these kind of, make these into little dents, basically. Oops, I got those. Click to one of those. So I think if we try something like smooth erosion, and let's see what that does for us. Well, there you go. So you see how nice the presets can be. It's kind of already given us kind of the thing we wanted, and I, and I kind of knew that. That's why I went I went back to it rather than carrying on just messing around with the. Uh, uh, with all the individual settings and obviously you can now slide these in and out until you get roughly what you want. To be honest it's not looking too bad though as it is. I want to avoid any kind of like serious kind of big bumps on the normal map. I just want these little dents. That's kind of what it's given us so although I would definitely advise messing with these. Mm, I might even leave that one in. I'm turning that one down a bit. Um, I normally advise resting with these. This has actually done a pretty good job. Yeah, maybe something like that. We don't want too many, too many dents in this. Okay, so with that initial thing made, bear in mind it will save you as a PSD in a temp kind of folder here. Um, but I'm just going to save this in my images folder here. So so I'm just going to save that in there like that. Um, your other option as well, of course, is to, if you can flatten this down, Control A select it all, control C, and if we just jump back to our uh, normal map, I still have that open, 
Nope, so I need to wake them up. Oh, that's the one there. So um, we can paste that in over the top. Um, and now some people will set this to overlay, of course, but that is destructive. We don't want to do that. It will get rid of all the information in the blue channel. So what you want to do is clone your normal map twice. Um, set yourself one color at 50% gray, so like that, and one at pure white. Then in layer one, you, in the red and green channel, you paste white. And in the other layer, in the blue channel, you paste gray. So then the one where you pasted white, you set to multiply. And the one that you pasted blue, you set to gray into blue, and you set to overlay. Okay, so we can see those details are now have now been added to our normal map. I do think they're going to be quite strong though, so let's just try turning down the opacity of them to about 20%. Then we'll try saving this out. Um, so we'll save as a PSD, but this time we'll put it in our with our other our other textures. So if we jump back into Marmoset, we'll need to load that normal map up. Um, we can see that bumpiness effect in the surface, so if we just... <laughs> we'll kind of delete that off. Um, we'll just load that in like that. And we can see the bumpiness is being applied to the surface, and that's looking pretty good. Um, obviously, again, this is one of those things where really you should spend more time, output a couple more, really test this out until you uh, until you get it right. Okay, so now we have a normal map set to work from. Um, let's start doing some text with this. So we want like a, a bit. Of, often these gold bars will have some actual text on them to show where the gold was manufactured and um, and that kind of stuff. So. Let's add some text on top of this. 